Good morning and welcome to the Franchise Minute. I'm Anna Wilds, the Franchise Economist. Today we have special guest Anthony Spagnola with Stand Strong Fencing. Anthony, welcome to the show, or I should say welcome back to the show. Hey Anna, thanks for having me again. Absolutely. So you are our first repeat guest star. You did such an awesome job the first time. We wanted to have you back, okay? Awesome. And and today's topic is how a franchise launches a new brand. And with knowing that that was going to be our topic today, I knew exactly who I wanted to be the guest star. And that is you, because I'm not going to take away your um, spotlight away from you and uh, Stand Strong Fencing, but you've just been awarding franchises for a month. Is that right? Yeah, we just launched the, the very end of September, so maybe a month and a half now. Wow, that's fantastic. Well, start us off, Anthony, by telling us a little bit about you and how you came to be with Stand Strong Fencing. Yeah, sure. So um, I've been in franchising over a decade now. I've actually, I started on the supplier side, selling marketing and technology into franchise companies. Uh, then I went out on my own as a consultant. I helped kind of build a franchise company from scratch with some friends. And then I ended up becoming a franchisee for a, a little while as well. So I've been on every side of franchising. I joined the team here at Horsepower a little over a year ago. I actually moved from New Jersey to Nebraska for this opportunity. Wow. And I ran the development for Mighty Dog Roofing uh, for the past year or so. Uh, we play, I placed probably about 50 franchisees and uh, about 175 territories in, in that past year. So we went on a pretty, pretty wild run. And you now did. That's impressive. That really is, Anthony. Thanks. Yeah. Now we're looking to do it again with uh, Stand Strong Fencing. All right. Well, tell the audience, what does Stand Strong Fencing do? So Stand Strong is literally the same exact business model as Mighty Dog Roofing. Instead of selling roofs, we're selling fences this time. So it's going to be both residential and commercial uh, fencing. And it's the same business model in the sense that it's a sales and marketing company. We actually sub out all of the labor. So we have subcontractors to do all the installation so that our franchisees can really focus on sales and marketing. Uh, so we're super excited. Uh, we just uh, actually signed our first couple uh, franchisees and we've got a whole bunch more um, you know, moving forward here in the next week or so. So we're, we're officially off to the races. That is really astounding. And the fact that in just going back to your track record with Mighty Dog Roofing, so few franchises even hit a hundred operational territories in the history of their brand. And y'all awarded a hundred and how many? It's like 175 or so in the last year. We've got actually over 400 territories now at Mighty Dog, active open territories. That really speaks to the strength of Horsepower Brands, which is a portfolio franchise company or the parent company for the audience to understand. So tell us, how does a Horsepower Brands portfolio franchise company launch a brand new brand? Yes. Yeah. that. So, you know, unlike, um, you know, some privately owned franchise companies where they start with like one location and maybe they have two or three and then they go out and try to franchise their business. The problem mm -hmm. with that is they don't uh, they don't have the capital. They don't have the experience. They don't have the infrastructure. Um, you know, the other the other end of that would be like private equity buying a franchise that has, you know, 50 locations already or 100 locations already. And maybe they're trying to just use their buying power to increase mm -hmm. you know, market share by a few points. You know, so right. we're a little bit different here at Horsepower. Uh, what we do is we go out and we look for uh, brands to acquire. So we try to find a, a privately owned company that has no more than three locations mm -hmm. and we acquire them. We rebrand them in most cases. We add all of our horsepower to it, you know, our, I love our, that. Yes. our technology, all that stuff. And then we go out and we start uh, awarding franchises. Well, let's go a little bit more into the detail because that's 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 where the magic is. How, um, my understanding from speaking with you previously is that, as you said, Horsepower already knows what businesses it wants to have in its portfolio. 
and what your <clears throat> expertise is are home services. So these are brands that all cross sell <laughs> to the same customer and also allow uh, what your founder, Zach Butler, shared with me is the stacking strategy. So you can stay in a current market. Say you have a three pack, the territory is sold out. But if you want to expand, you don't need to go outside your market. You just stack another brand on top. And he explained to me uh, that that is extremely attractive to private equity. He yep. doesn't have to span, you know, 10, 10 states <laughs> and, you know, monitor a business that the more concise it is, the better, the easier it is to operate. So that's very insightful and seems to be a, a, a strategy that Horsepower Brands has kind of perfected. Yeah, we call that the empire builder model. So we've actually already got over a dozen franchisees who own multiple horsepower brands. So they're doing what we're doing on a smaller scale. They're building mm -hmm. a, you know, a portfolio of, uh, of home service franchises in their territories so that they can package it up and sell it to private equity down the road. Anthony, one of the things you also shared with me is that so horsepower knows what industries it's looking to have a brand in. And, and what's the criteria for that? I don't want to give it all the way you, you share. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're never going out looking to reinvent the wheel. We're not trying to come out with a new shiny object, you know, in the franchise space. We want to find stuff that's proven stuff that's, that's worked, you know, for hundreds of years. And we just want to go out and do it better than everybody else and provide a much better customer experience. Uh, so we, we really stick to the home service, um, you know, space. And, you know, we look for, concepts that we know we can really make a dramatic impact and, uh, you know, really disrupt the market with our sales and marketing engine, with our technology and software, with all the experience that we have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we want to make sure it's a, it's a concept that we can find uh, labor, that we can find employees, that we can drive leads. You know, so these are all the types of things we look for. We knew for sure that we wanted to get into the fencing space. This is probably the hottest segment in home services right now. There is so much demand for fencing, it's ridiculous. And there's really no big, you know, national players yet. There's no big private equity out there. There's nobody that owns a, you know, a big chunk of the market share. So there's, um, you know, a huge opportunity in this space. Uh, we knew we wanted uh, to get into fencing. So we were out there looking for, you know, fencing companies to acquire. Well, I tell you, uh, the thing that kind of resonated with me was you shared that horsepower looks for of course, a highly fragmented market, meaning they're just a bunch of mom and pops, independents, no national brand leader. And also that there's unmet demand. There's huge demand in the space. And I can personally uh, share my story about fencing as a customer. So we moved to a house. We needed a little, just a little area fenced in for our dog. And Anthony, I was shocked by two things. One, that how long we had to wait. I think it was a minimum of three weeks. It might have been four just to have somebody install. You know, it was like, here, we'll pay you. Just come put a, yep. a fix up for us. And then the second thing, it was shockingly expensive for this little area. So I have a fence in and they, so anyway, what do you, what do you say to that? Yeah, that's a, a very common story that I've heard, you know, uh, many times. Uh, like I said, there's more demand than there is supply right now. Um, these mom and pops, they can't keep up with the demand. Thank so you. yeah, the wait, the, the turnaround time is really long. The customer service is usually pretty poor because they don't mm -hmm. you know, they have so many leads. They don't need to really, you know, give you a great customer experience. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a huge opportunity out there in the fencing space to say the least. Well, and share a little bit more about the breadth of the service, you know, fencing, I think of a picket fence or a chain link fence. And you had shared earlier that it's both residential and commercial. It's probably industrial as well. So, yeah. Yeah. So we're doing all, all different types of fencing. You know, the most popular types are going to be wood, um, ornamental, which is your aluminum and steel, vinyl and chain link. There's also wire fencing and other types of fencing we're going to be getting into. Um, for both residential and commercial. So there's a lot of target customers. We're not just going after homeowners and business owners. We're going after property managers, HOAs, home builders, uh, you name it. There's a 
so many opportunities on the commercial side also like construction sites you know parks uh, ranches schools um wow yeah so, so many opportunities out there in the fencing space so we're gonna be going after all of it that is amazing and you're right i can't think of any <laughs> anyone that's outside of our own market you know, that has a fencing company. So that is just a ma wonderful, wonderful opportunity for the right investor. So Anthony, let's talk a little bit about myths because there's always myths about franchises. <laughs> and there are also myths particular to new emerging brands. There's kind of the thought out there that a new emerging brand is riskier than an established brand. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, no, that's a great uh, point. And I think in a lot of cases, you know, it, it might be, you know, it probably is riskier to get into a new brand, but with horsepower, um, it's really not, you know, because we've done this a thousand times. Literally, I think we just hit uh, a, a thousand active territories, a thousand wow. open territories throughout horsepower brands. And this is the same model that we use for Mighty Dog and some other brands. So um, we've also got a really experienced leadership team. You know, we brought over some of the guys from Mighty Dog Roofing that were responsible for bringing Mighty Dog from zero to over 400 you know, territories across the country. These guys know what they're doing. Uh, we've built out a full leadership team. Uh, so we've got the experience, we've got the systems and processes in place, we've got all the software and technology. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a unique opportunity where you're still getting in early, where you can get those, those hot markets, those, you know, those major yeah. metros. We've got all, we've got some great territories available, um, but you're still, you know, getting the experience of a very established, you know, brand that's done this really more than anybody in the space. What I think is really unique is so first you find the founding location, you know, this is in the area you want to be in. Then the next step, as you explained it to me, is then you get a brand president, you get you, the director of uh, franchise, I mean, an entire team, executive team is built and then you bolt on then those people bolt on add the horsepower the systems the processes the technology you know the yeah. marketing etc and that is very unique in all of franchising and this is before you've even awarded the first territory <laughs> yeah no well, i mean the fact is most companies can't afford to do that you know horsepower brands is very well capitalized so we're able to build out a full leadership team and have these people on staff for months before we even mm -hmm. You know, launch our first franchise so we've got a, a brand president a director of operations a director of marketing a director of sales a franchise business coach i think we're actually hiring a couple more positions right now uh, and and again we, we haven't even launched our first franchise yet so um you know we have the resources in place to make sure that our franchises are getting taken care of and that we're able to get them open and get them to profitability you know quickly quickly. So you've done this eight times in counting. You're probably going to do it at least eight more times. I would think you've got a playbook, you've perfected it. You know, you put the people in place, put the team in place, you add the horsepower, the systems, training, support, all that. Then you launch. And like you said, because you're a privately held company, not private equity, but your founders uh, fund uh, the, the portfolio franchise company, you can do this and, and it looks, sounds like, and looks like you do it better than anyone else out there. So congratulations. Fantastic. Thanks, well, Anna. Anthony, we are out of time. So if anybody, if anybody wants to learn more about Stand Strong Fencing, what do you recommend they do? I would recommend they hit you up, Anna. Um, Anna's <laughs> got all sorts of great brands that she works with, so she'll find the best fit for you and kind of help you start your journey. Oh, well, thank you very much, Anthony. And you can tell I'm a fan of horsepower brands because of all that support and how you start so strong, how you do mitigate the risk, even from the first territory that's awarded with your new brands. So congratulations. I know this is going to be another whirlwind launch, just like Mighty Dog Roofing. And it's going to be hard to beat the success <laughs> that y'all had with Mighty Dog Roofing. But I bet you're going to try. <laughs> that's right. We definitely are. All right, fantastic. Well, Anthony, this is Anthony Spagnola with uh, Stand Strong Fencing, a horsepower brand. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Audience, thank you for joining us. And come back next week. We're going to have a very interesting topic. 
mental health. Who knew that mental health was a franchisable concept? So see you next week. Thank you so much, Anthony. Everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye. Happy Thanksgiving.